decisions that are made at the corporate level every day. Well, maybe it's not the, the, the corporate level that happens sometimes, but at, the, at lower levels in the, in the corporation, um, by someone who will deny uh, a request from a doctor for coverage, uh, as happened uh, shortly before I left, a, a young woman, 17-year-old girl in Netherlands, Sarkeesian, whose doctors had recommended a liver transplant for her, her doctors at UCLA. Uh, my employers, uh, my employer initially denied that on the grounds that it was investigational and experimental. Um, after the big protest, Sigma agreed to cover the uh, procedure, but it was too late. The girl died a few hours later. Um, that, that's one example. That happens a lot. And, and it's not just big cases like that, but day to day, a lot of small claims are denied, or, or uh, uh, doctors uh, find out that their request for payment has been delayed or denied because of the, a code being wrong or something like that. That happens all the time. It's, in many cases, it's not big things. It's nickel and diming the, uh, the doctors to death. Uh, and they have to have big staffs uh, to, to deal with the insurance companies. It's another uh, reason why this small payment system is, is, is so unique in the world. We certainly have a uniquely American healthcare system. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's, it's one reason why, in this country, about 30% of our, our dollars that we pay for health care are essentially spent needlessly in administrative expenses. Um, so there is rationing, uh, denial of care. If there is reform passed, and I think even in the best bill uh, that, that prohibits insurers from using pre-existing conditions and a lot of the other things, like I said, that should be made illegal, they'll, they'll undoubtedly tighten up uh, their uh, medical reviews. They're, they'll, they'll put more focus on medical expenses, as they call them, medical expense management. Uh, they're not going to... Uh, disappoint their investors. They know what happens. I know what happens when when a company, a for-profit company, uh, disappoints investors. One of my jobs was to uh, uh, communicate the company's financial situation, the financial media, every time, every three months when the company uh, announced uh, earnings. And I followed every company in the industry for many years. If you miss what's called the medical loss ratio, which you alluded to, which I'll describe, uh, uh, the stock price will, will start to decline. I've seen one company, I saw one company's stock decline 20% um, a single day because it had reported a medical loss ratio that rose from 77.9% to 79.2%. Seems like a small amount, and it is, uh, when you're looking at decimal points, they call them basis points in the industry. But that translates into billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, that will not be going into the pockets of the shareholders. Uh, it's reduced profitability. And so then the, the shareholders will get upset and a lot of them will sell their shares and stock price goes down. The medical loss ratio is a measure of how much a company takes in in premiums and how much it's, it pays out in medical claims. And as you noted, in 1993, uh, the average medical loss ratio in the industry was 95, 95%, uh, which means that only uh, at 95 cents of a premium dollar was being used for the company to pay medical claims. Now, it's around 80, so it's dropped that much. And that's a huge, huge amount of money uh, when you consider all the premiums that go into these companies. Just last year alone, last year, the seven big companies, uh, the total revenues was $250 billion. Uh, so you can imagine uh, how much of a difference it makes when you can reduce the medical loss ratio from 95 to 80. It makes a big, big difference. And, and uh, Wall Street loves it, and if, uh, if, if they think that the company has not done an adequate job of managing medical expenses and that medical loss ratio starts to tick up a little bit, um, then they'll pay for it dearly uh, when they announce earnings.